Why seek immediate shelter? This is not a drill. The man telling a child to climb down a manhole following this false alarm. It wasn't until 38 minutes later that a correction was sent to cell phones saying it was all a false alarm. Somebody pushed the wrong button. What if there actually was an attack and a missile coming in? I mean, it, yeah. it was, a, it was a, a circus of errors. Days away from a fast approaching deadline for Congress to pass a spending bill. And a deal on DACA remains a key sticking point. Everybody should be thanking him, trying to get to the bottom of this. Representatives from North and South Korea have agreed to meet for follow-up talks on next month's Winter Olympics. Brian flips one into the end zone with a prayer incomplete. The first playoff win for the Eagles since the 2008 season. It's like a soundtrack of my life. For you guys, it's kind of retro. It's kind of retro, <laughs> but it, was, it still it lives on. Yeah, it still it's motivates. This is timeless. So if you're in your bed and you started a workout program for the new year, <laughs> you're going to get in shape, then get out of bed because we just played the soundtrack for you. If not, then just pull the covers up. And just open your eyes a little bit and watch us this morning. Or <laughs> listen. There's a you lot of visual the therapy. I you don't get know. to make the choice. Get up, get after it, or stay lazy. It's yeah, Sunday morning. Or, or grab I mean, a this, cup of this I would say for anybody who's getting up is a way better wake up call than the folks got in Hawaii at about 8 o'clock in the well morning, played. yesterday morning. Their wow. phones went off uh, with one of those emergency alerts that you can't override saying that there was an incoming ballistic missile threat. There this is, is just not a test, one problem. Yeah, not a test, it says. <laughs> There's just one problem. It wasn't even a test. Somebody just hit the wrong button. So this is the alert that came to the phones to folks in Hawaii. It said, oh, we have it. Okay. this emergency alert pops up. Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. Now, if you're on Twitter, you saw this retweeted and pushed out immediately. Because yep. when it says this is not a drill, and in light of what you know, the world we're in right now with North Korea, you, know, you have to take it seriously. Right, but it took 38 minutes before they were able to send another alert saying, hey, this was a false alarm. In the meantime, people were scrambling. They were panicking. That's right. Um, they were putting children in drain holes and hiding in their bathtubs. Yeah. Frightening stuff. So this alert goes out to 1.3 million Hawaii residents and thousands who are visiting the island. 13 minutes later, now, you go on Twitter, you debunk it, right? Their the emergency management uh, That's service. what you'd be doing if you were running for your life. Like you'd, be checking, <laughs> you'd be checking Twitter. Hey, That's let me call right. my parents yeah. and say goodbye, and let me check Twitter, too. So U.S. Pacific Command debunked it and everything else. But you're right. It doesn't matter until that next alert hits the phone of those 1.3 million people. It says, million. not true. Don't worry about it. Um, but it is a reminder of, of the world that we live in, of the umbrella of a threat, especially our 50th state out there in Hawaii that is in proximity of North Korea. Well, well there, was, there was no ballistic missile, thankfully. Yep. Uh, however, that did not keep the left from going ballistic. And not only are we talking about Hollywood going ballistic, but take a listen to one of the Democratic representatives from Hawaii just moments after learning that not only was this a false alarm, but this was entirely because of a state-run emergency operations center. Take a listen. Our leaders have failed us. Donald Trump is taking too long. He's not taking this threat seriously, and there's no time to waste. We've got to get rid of this nuclear threat from North Korea. We've got to achieve peace, not play politics, but achieve peace, because this is literally life and death that is at stake for the people of Hawaii and the people of this country. So the other person who jumped in right away to blame President Trump and not the person, by the way, who pushed the wrong button was Jim Carrey. He tweeted because he happened to be on the on the island um, at the time. He said, I woke up this morning in Hawaii with 10 minutes to live. It was a false alarm, but a real psychic warning. If we allow this one man, Gamora, and his corrupt Republican Congress to continue alienating the world, we are headed for suffering beyond all imagination. Jamie Lee Curtis jumped yeah, not in. Not to be outdone. Yes. 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 Yeah. She, Jamie Lee Curtis tweeted this on, uh, as well, saying, This Hawaii missile scare is on you, Mr. Trump. The real fear that mothers and fathers and children felt is on you. It is on your arrogance, hubris, narcissism, rage, ego, immaturity, and your unstable idiocy. Shame on your hate-filled self. You did this.
So wow. it wasn't the guy, wasn't the guy who accidentally pushed the button, right. or the lack of protocols. It, you know, I know Tulsi Gabbard. She's an Iraq War veteran. She, but she's a far left member of Congress. Uh, she, what did it take her a couple of words to get the word Trump out? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do we not recall that it was a 1994 deal that Bill Clinton signed with North Korea that started this ball rolling, and George W. Bush didn't handle it any better, and neither did Barack Obama, and so Trump's got this difficult hand. But it's amazing to watch Ace Ventura. Uh, and Jamie Lee Curtis criticized the president <laughs> as if it's his fault. Well, that this I've kind of heard the word out. North Korea more over the last year than I heard over the last right. eight years of the Obama administration, which signals to me that this is a big problem that Donald Trump decided to take on as soon as he got into office. Now, is it hard? Like you said, he was, dealt a, he was dealt a tough hand, but it looks like this is a president who's not trying to kick this down the road. And let's not forget, it was South Korea that said that they actually give credit to the president for the meetings that are coming up that are yeah. really kind of a little bit of a break yeah. and in some of the it's a really good point if you're willing to embrace this terrible situation suddenly you now own it yeah. uh, and you have to give the president a lot of credit for his willingness to embrace what is a it, it, it's an untenable situation yes. is it nuclear war is it conventional war you know t you want to have talks but the talks have proved to be ineffective as north korea has used them to arm themselves um, but he's not pointing fingers at other administrations. He's yeah. just owning this problem and saying, if you believe in America first, then you better do something about the one regime that wants to launch missiles at our homeland. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a stark reminder. So it thankfully, is a stark not, reminder. Yeah, no, you, not you, real. You, but if you think about it in a way, this is sort of part and parcel for the Trump administration. Whatever problems he's inherited, he tends not to look back and blame his predecessor, as others have mm -hmm. done in the office, and look forward. One thing that he has said he really wants to deal with is military readiness and sort of what would happen in this worst case scenario is the u.s government ready politico had a thought about that in light <laughs> of this failed uh, sort of episode i guess you could say or yeah. snafu the snafu involves solely the hawaiian emergency operations center this yep. is talking though about the u.s government in general politico saying the u.s government hasn't tested these plans meaning a plan for incoming missiles in 30 years. All the fresh faces sitting around the table in the Situation Room have little idea what their roles would be in this <laughs> scenario. Okay. Uh, I love well, it. Sarah Sanders has something yeah. to say yeah. about that. Uh, she says, General Kelly, General Mattis, General McMaster, General Kellogg, and General Waddell, some of the greatest military leaders of their generation are fresh faces, Doubt ISIS would That's agree. Great. That is such it's a great tweet. Such a great response. <laughs> well, well done. And the reality is uh, you, you might have fresh new faces in these right. positions, but the amount of experience they have is unprecedented. You know, you got to revisit protocols, and apparently the folks in Hawaii have said, well, we didn't have a redundant, you know, we didn't have two people overwatching it. It was a mistake, but uh, yeah. it's yeah. silly to watch Politico and others jump to, well, this is somehow the Trump administration. Well, right. and, and, and not hold the people responsible who are of, yeah. uh, there in Hawaii. All right, th this is sort of an interesting thing that we've seen play out over the past couple of days now as it related to that famous meeting inside the White House on Thursday where President Trump allegedly used some salty language. We're learning a little bit more about that. Yeah. Now, some Democratic aides are talking about that meeting when this gang of six came to show up. And they're saying that Lindsey Graham and Dick Durbin expected to have a meeting. They show up and there is an anti-immigrant cast of characters there. And that was obviously designed by Stephen Miller to try and kill the deal that they had come to present to the president. Now, in and of itself, that quote can mean a lot of different things, but it perhaps could give us an idea or shed some light on why that bombshell leak came out. If you don't like what happened in a meeting, then you just go ahead and leak something out as a distraction. You're right. It's a good, it's an interesting new nugget. That quote came out in the Hill from uh, one of Dick Durbin's aides. So they show up at the meeting and it, they thought it was just going to be them. Turns out there were a couple more folks there. I think we have a full screen of who else was there. Uh, a representative, Goodell, uh, Goodlot, uh, on the House side. And then on the Senate side, Senators Perdue and Cotton, both of which known to be um, very strong on their views 
uh, on, on what we should do with immigration. And Stephen the Miller was there as and well. And Stephen Miller. So they're giving credit to Stephen Miller. Uh, the, the report also pushes back and says, well, the president was the one that said, I want Purdue and Cotton there as well. Because, the, because if you don't think that Durbin and Graham are going to give you a strong immigration bill, which those of us that have followed this know they're not going to, then why would you not have some guys that are going to have your back in that meeting? Well, and the president treated, you know, uh, subsequently, and he said, look, I did not like this deal. And it was mm -hmm. obvious. I mean, he got an eighth of what he wanted for the wall. He didn't get uh, an end to chain migration. Mm -hmm. He did get the lottery. Um, but look, it was, it was a no deal for the president based on what he had said earlier in the week when we had Correct. those 55 minutes. He said, I want to give you DACA. I want to solve this problem, but you got to give me my wall. You got to end chain migration. You got to end the lottery system. And um, so I, I doubt it was the people. I think it was the deal. And Leland, you're right. It gives us more insight into why those comments may have been made. Right, why they may have been made public. I interviewed Tom Cotton on Thursday, and he said essentially what you were saying, which is the president is ready to deal. Yeah. Clearly now we know a little bit more uh, about what he knew at that moment on Thursday when he was saying, we're ready to make a deal. We've got to get sort of the dials right. Clearly, they're not right yet. Well, we got to move to headlines right we now. We do. Yes, All right. go ahead. So turning now to your headlines, overnight, the first indictment is out in the Justice Department's probe of the Clinton State Department Uranium One deal. Mike Lambert, a former uh, company president of Maryland Nuclear Capable Transit Company, faces 11 counts, including wire fraud and mo money laundry. The DOJ says he paid bribes to Russians to win nuclear transport contracts. The deal was okayed by the Obama administration, including Hillary Clinton, giving a Russian company 20% control of U.S. uranium. A chilling threat to NFL fans and players, police arresting a man threatening to commit a mass shooting at today's Pittsburgh Steelers playoff game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. According to an affidavit, Yutuna Chuchunko from Texas, sorry, that was a tough name, nice, nice job. <laughs> sent threats to Heinz Field and a Pittsburgh news station. One reading, quote, the Steelers game will be packed, and that's when I plan on killing Steelers football players and fans before taking my own pitiful life. The FBI tracing it back to a facility in San Antonio. He now faces terror charges. It's business as usual for the New England Patriots, the defending Super Bowl champ champions, dismantling the Tennessee Titans in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, 35 to 14. Tom Brady and the Pats head to their seventh straight AFC title game. It was a different story in Philadelphia. The one-seeded Eagles, the underdogs at home against the Atlanta Falcons. This one going down to the wire. Trouble. Brian flips one into the engine with a prayer incomplete. Brian still wants Backup quarterback it. Nick Foley led the charge against the former N NFC champs 15 to 10. They play the winner of today's matchup between the Saints and the Vikings. You better believe they do. That's why I got my Vikings tie on this morning. You I'm ready do. to go. My squad has a chance this year. Please mm. cheer. Little chance. Little chance. All right. Well, House Intel Chair Devin Nunes says the government abused its surveillance power to allegedly spy on the Trump campaign. Uh, Our next guest know, worked on that campaign and says he was unmasked because of it. Wow. And she was convicted of leaking government secrets. Now, yes, she wants to serve <laughs> in government. Devin Nunes accusing the government of abusing its surveillance powers to target Americans. Our next guest claims he was unfairly unmasked. Michael Caputo, former senior advisor of the Trump campaign, joins us now. Michael, good to see you and good morning. Good morning. Um, if you were unmasked for political reasons, that is a federal crime. Do you have any evidence to support this or is this sort of what folks have been telling you who are your friends? Well, I, I was informed by a person who was connected to the intelligence services that I was unmasked. Not, but I'm not in a, a small company. There were hundreds, if not just over a thousand people who were unmasked for what appears to be political purposes just because we're connected to uh, then the, the Republican nominee. You know, I don't know how this impacted my life. But it's starting to look like the uh, uh, political reasons were behind a lot of this investigation and especially some of this FISA activity. The new news here, Michael, is that Devin Nunes has seen these FISA warrants and that he believes they show that there was political targeting. Do you know anything more about what he may have seen and what it would reveal? 
No, I don't, but I'm waiting uh, on the edge of my seat to find out. And I thank God every day for Devin Nunez. All of us who are caught up in this bogus investigation are very happy that he has been dogged in his uh, actions trying to get to the bottom of a lot of this political intelligence investigations. You know, they went after Devin Nunez as well. I mean, they tried to ruin his reputation, brought him into an ethics investigation. They'll stop at nothing to, to keep this uh, secret. I'm I'm quite sure. I just want to get back. I want to get back to this where you say you were told by a friend. Mm -hmm. Where where do we make the leap from? I was told by a friend that this happened. It was connected to the intelligence community to this definitely happened to somehow my phone calls were listened to. Um, I, all I know is that my cell phone was unmasked and. Uh...